now we turn our attention to the PGA Championship in Louisville, where our man MJ Ward, senior writer for Golf World, joins us here on Sports Talk. MJ, great to have you with us once again. How are you? Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you guys, and um, you know, really exciting times in the golf world. A lot of a lot of great things that happened, and it was it was good to be in my own hometown to see uh, the impressive win by Rose Dang yesterday. It was um, was really impressive to see her play. I mean, she birdied four of the final five holes to uh, to get a two-stroke victory over Madeline Sagstrom. It was impressive play by the. 21 year I'm sorry the 20 year old who will turn 21 by the end of this month she's going to be the next big thing on the LPGA tour um yeah I I would think she has every every opportunity to do that it, it's amazing her first two wins happen to be in New Jersey and she's the defending champion at the event that will be played this coming week the Mizuho Americas Open at Liberty National so it'll be you know be interesting to see how she progresses I mean, clearly Nellie Corda, having won five consecutive events, um, she just came undone on the third round, but it was impressive uh, nonetheless to have somebody put that kind of winning streak. Unfortunately, she didn't really get as much media attention because she happened to be doing her streak just as Scotty Scheffler was really picking up the pace on his side. Yeah. And now we turn our attention to the PGA Championship at Valhalla in Louisville. Tiger is going to be there, of course. Saw where he arrived yesterday and started putting in some work. But let's go ahead and take dismiss the Tiger story. Are we expecting anything spectacular from him, or just another um, <laughs> run of the mill two days from him? Or even if he makes the cut, won't be uh, in competition come the weekend. Yeah, I, I just don't. I, you know, I the best way I can explain Tiger Woods. Somebody asked me this. I said, "Well, Tiger is like old timers' day, hmm. but he still thinks he's in the, he thinks he's still in the real game." And it's it's you know I don't mean to be disrespectful. I mean, when you won 15 majors and you have over 80 PGA Tour wins, but everything about Tiger now is and his golf is about the past. There really isn't a future pathway that I can see for playing 72 holes. I mean, if he makes the cut. That's a tremendous story, but I think at some point, you know, it gets old after a while. You know, if that's the best you can do is making cuts, um, you know, eventually it's going to dawn on him, Phil, that, you know, competitive golf at the very high level is is just not going to work anymore. I mean, it, 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 it happens to everyone. It's just a question of when. I just think with Tiger um, – you know, it'll, it'll happen at some point. It could happen this year. I mean, I have said this. It would not shock me that at the end of this year, if he does not perform at a high level, that he may just simply say, you know, I will no longer be playing at the elite level. And, you know, maybe he'll then, you know, retire from then until he until he opts to play maybe in the champion side hmm. when he turns 50. But, but again, I'm speculating on that happening. Um, you know, part of one of the things that made Tiger Tiger – it was the ability to play through everybody else saying what could not be done, and then he did it. But now the reality is that his body has got more miles on it simply because of the surgeries and the talent level that exists globally. Is There's nothing like it, both on the men's side and on the women's side. So, you know, the game has evolved. The only thing is, is that Tiger at 48 – He's more about yesterday than about tomorrow. All right, looking ahead to uh, this tournament at Valhalla, reading some things about the course. Firmer, faster, uh, they say maybe even more demanding. What are the What's going to be awaiting the golfers when we get to uh, the, real, the real deal on Thursday? Well, the difficulty is, is that the weather pattern is going to be very subjected to thunderstorms and, you know, there'll be intermittent showers. Um, there's going to be some spots when the, you know, when it will not be raining. Um, the, the caliber of the players today, Phil, is, is just, I mean, you just saw what Rory McIlroy did on the, on a stretch of holes at Quail Hollow. And to amplify what was said by, I believe it was said by Trevor, Trevor Immelman yesterday on the CBS telecast, Quail Hollow is anything but an easy golf course. And if you watch Rory McIlroy in full flight, 
he just played awesome golf for, for a six, seven hole stretch. It looked like he was playing, you know, without any hesitation or any type of fear. Um, when these guys get going, um, they can shoot whatever number is possible. I mean, I can remember a few years back because I played Beth Page many times growing up and even playing it in, comp- in competitions. When Brooks Kepka went out with 63-65 to set the record of 128 and to do it at Beth Page Black, that was just, I mean, there's no words to describe that kind of play. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just off the charts. So I would not be surprised. I think the key, one of the things that I think really is the missing storyline, Phil, is golf has not really had a battle between the key participants. So take Scotty Scheffler, take Brooks Kepka, Rory McIlroy, Ludwig Auberg, and maybe even John Rahm. If, if golf is going to make a move in terms of attention this week, the key players need to be the ones battling each other in terms of getting the Wanamaker Trophy uh, to take home with them. So I think it'll be interesting to see, can can the top players reemerge? I mean, I'm going to be very curious to see how Scotty Scheffler performs. I mean, he just had the birth of his son. That just happened recently, you know, within the week. Um, it'll be interesting to see how he comes back into the fray after being, you know, sidelined. I mean, yeah, he personally wanted to be with his wife in Dallas. So he's been off the circuit for three weeks. You now have the emergence or reemergence of Rory McIlroy, his last major that he won came 10 years ago at Valhalla. Mm. And then you always have, you know, in my mind, I always call him the Darth Vader of golf, Brooks Kepka. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, he's the kind of guy that, you know, if he's in his way of, of thinking, he doesn't fear anybody out there. And when you've won five majors, he's the defending champion. There's going to be interesting to see. And then, of course, you have the new generation of players, uh, Ludwig is obviously one of the top ones to talk about, but Moronk from Poland is another one that comes to mind. Tommy Kim. I mean, there's a number of these younger guys that could possibly break through and claim their first major championship. So it's going to be interesting to see how the super elite players go. I mean, if Scotty Scheffler were to win the PGA championship, he will then have done what Jordan Spieth did nine years ago, which is win the first two majors of the year. And then all of a sudden, you know, that changes the entire calculus as we prepare for the U.S. Open at Pinehurst. Mm-hmm. MJ, I wanted to follow up on your comments regarding Brooks Kepka. If I'm not mistaken, last year when he won the PGA Championship, the week before he won on the Live Tour, and I think he's in that same pattern once again. What is it about his golf game that he's able to ramp things up probably better than anybody when it comes major golf time? I, I just think the main strength of Brooks Kepka is he doesn't let distractions get to him. If you, I mean, I've attended I don't know how many press conferences where he speaks. Um, um, you know, the, the Kepka focus is such that he doesn't really get distracted or get bothered by it. I mean, I, I can remember when he won at Bell Reeve and Tiger was playing extremely well, and he had to overcome all of the noise that goes on when Tiger is in contention. And he handled it. I mean, he did brilliantly on that day. Um, I, I have a lot of respect for him because he doesn't allow himself to get sidetracked. Now, there's only two times when I saw him not really play well in a final round of a major. One was at Kiowa when Mickelson took him out. And, of course, when John Rahm won the Masters event in 23, you know, Brooks was just not at his you know form. But overall, you know, Besides Mickelson, nobody's won more major championships. So I would say, you know, if he gets in the mix of these things, he's not in awe of Rory McIlroy. He's not in awe of Scotty Scheffler. He knows what he's capable of doing. And with his putting, which is always the key with these guys, I mean, who's putting the best? If Brooks is doing what he did in Singapore and brings that kind of game forward, I would fully expect him to be close to the lead uh, in this championship. Uh, last thing, we'll let you go. Then we'll connect with you on Thursday. Uh, the course, uh, what should we expect from the PGA setting this thing up? Expecting, uh, of course, the very heavy rough. And uh, what else should we be looking for from Valhalla? Well, I, I think the main person that has always done a superb job, uh, the, the head man for the PGA, his name is Kerry Haig. Uh, 
Kerry is extremely skillful at knowing how to set the golf course up. Valhalla has been updated by the Jack Nicklaus team so that the golf course itself, you know, has a few more wrinkles to it. The two nines are completely different. The front nine is more set in lowlands. The back nine goes into the interior hardwoods, and it has much more of a grade changes in terms of how the terrain moves about. I think it's going to be exciting. I will tell you this, among fan bases in the United States, when you get into the Ohio River Valley area or western Pennsylvania or even Charlotte as they played at the Wells Fargo, the turnout for this is going to be really exciting. It's been 10 years since they were back, and I think it's going to be great to be on hand to see once again what Louisville is all about. If they thought the Kentucky Derby is special, you know, as it was in the first Saturday in May, this is going to be (laughs) equally uh, special for the town of Louisville and all the folks that are in that area. And we love the majors, and we're going to love this week. We thank you. Thank you for the great insight. We'll talk to you Thursday. Guys, always a pleasure. Take care, and we'll talk to you then. You got it, buddy. Appreciate it, MJ. MJ Ward from uh, Louisville. He'll be there for the tournament. Of course, he writes, does a great job writing for several publications, but primarily Golf World out of the U.K. This is a, like I say with MJ, he's a writer of international repute. So we appreciate him being with us and does a great job. And, of course, George will be along, talk more golf and 